Hi guys, Blake here with Lily's Landing Resort and Marina. It is Saturday, April the 25th, and this is the one cast. Today, I am starting here right at the beginning of the Narrows. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. We got kind of been cloudy off and on. The sun will pop out and then it'll be overcast again. It's kind of switching back and forth for the last few hours. Had a big storm roll through last night. I don't think it brought much accumulation with it, but uh, lots of thunder and lightning. Uh, certainly a front that probably affected the fish a little bit. <clears throat> They're running four units of water today. I imagine just to continue running off whatever rain we've gotten in the last few days. Um, lots of boats on the water today. It's been picking up the last few days with boat traffic and people getting out and enjoying the weather and the fishing. Today I'm starting off four pound test on one of our uh, Lily's landing rods that we sell up in the shop. This is the six foot model. I've got a Sculpin, Sculpin head, Sculpin feathered jig. Eighth ounce. Eighth ounce because there's four units running and uh, we've got like 16 mile an hour wind gusts today. Um, so just like that there. It is a uh, might be a little bit of a challenge even keeping this eighth ounce jig down with this amount of wind blowing. So that's why I've, I'm right up against the bank and that's where I'm gonna start fishing here. Because the water is just a little bit slower there on the edge and it might, might give my jig time to sink down. Got some fishing reports today. Dwayne had a trip this morning. They boated multiple browns under 20. Yeah, my jig was not sinking at all there. Not even a little bit. It was right on the surface. <sighs> no fish on the one cast. Uh, they boated a few browns under 20 and they boated a 23 inch brown on the signature series. Riffles out today. They boated a, a brown that was maybe right under 20, dragging uh, little floating stick baits down by Monkey Island. Got another group of guys that are, uh, they've been dragging the stick baits the last two days, yesterday and today. They've been dragging them mainly from um, our dock down to Monkey Island. Uh, they've been catching lots of rainbows. They had a live well full yesterday. Uh, got a few guys out drifting. They were drifting some orange power bait. And they, they reported catching fish. Uh, Dwayne said this morning after they were done throwing the jerk bait, uh, I, don't, I don't remember asking him where he went to go jig fishing. I think they went up behind Eagle Island and they caught some nice rainbows back there. And another group of guys said that they were catching some fish on the Sculpin and Peach uh, jig with a Sculpin head. Oh, that might have been a fish. So I decided to start over here on this side at the top of the Narrows uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, because the inside edge there was just a little less windy than everywhere else. And number two, because it is shallower and even with the wind, I should be able to get the jig within a, you know, the fish's eyesight. Um, 
in the shallower water even if I can't get it to sink down as far. Another thing I like to do when I'm jig fishing in the wind, I'll pop my jig up and I'll lay my rod tip straight down uh, to keep the line on top of the water where it can't get blown around as much. But the, uh, the white stick baits dragging those or bigger stick baits jerking them uh, and, and the white colors or the pearl colors uh, has been doing very well the last couple days and this morning when it was nice and overcast. Uh, the sculpin colors have been working, especially this all sculpin jig uh, for the past, well, I don't know, four or five days now really. has been a good choice. Oh, that might have been a fish. It's so hard to tell with this wind blowing the line around. Really hard to feel. Feel the bites. And that jig is just still not sinking very well. Something you can do to cheat that is cast, you know, if the wind's blowing against your boat and the current's going this way, you can cast upstream, try to cheat it, get it to sink down to the bottom and vice versa. If the wind's blowing your boat faster than the current, cast downstream. And oh, <clears throat> anyway, you cast downstream and it'll allow your jig to sink a little bit. See some fish jumping up here in the mouth of the slough behind Eagle Island. Thought about trying there again. I do know a couple people that have been up there and I did see a pontoon boat in there when I drove by. Didn't want to disturb their fishing. I think they were talking about a high of 69 today. 68. There's a fish. Caught him right in the in the eddy water coming off of the point of Eagle Island. Nice. Silver looking rainbow there. Uh, another color of jig that's been working well, especially once the sun pops out, is the tri olive jig. <coughs> Which has one of the three colors in the tri olive jig is this sculpin color. Well, if you're coming out to fish in the four units of water and the wind blowing, uh, I definitely recommend the eighth ounce jig. Even if they were only running three units of water right now, I would most likely be using an eighth ounce with the way the wind's blowing.
looks like I might have found the moment in time here where the wind is not blowing. Another thing to keep in mind when you're fishing windy conditions with a jig is you're going to have to give that jig a little more time to sink. Today I've honestly, you know, I'll do my jig motion on it and then I'll put my rod tip down and I kind of almost wait until I can feel the bottom again before I jig it just to make sure I know I'm there. Whereas normally, if I was in better conditions, I would, uh, I would try to jig the I would try to jig it just right above the bottom without ever touching the bottom. But uh, on a day like today where it's hard to see the line and hard to feel it, uh, it's almost better to kind of let it touch the bottom for a second so that at least you know you're getting there. The way the sun's shining down now, the fish are definitely on the bottom. I found the bottom there. There goes a jig. <coughs> Uh, I'm going to switch over to a brown head, sculpin and peach, eighth ounce again. <clears throat> and that's on four pound test. I'm floating this inside bank because it's the shallow side, somewhere where I can find the bottom. Level one cast, man, thank you. <laughs> We're doing it right now. <laughs> wow. Couple one cast fans there. Sometimes when I'm fishing the sculpin and peach jigs or the sculpin and ginger, sometimes it doesn't seem to matter what color the head is. Uh, they'll bite it whether it has our orange head, our brown head, or our sculpin head. But there are days uh, where I've noticed that the head color can be the difference between catching fish, catching more fish, or catching less fish. Um, I didn't bring any other color heads with me so I'm hoping this brown one's working uh, I do know that the guys <coughs> came in a little bit ago said that they were doing really well on the sculpin head version and they went up to go buy more so it could be one of those days but I'll give it a little bit longer of a chance here to figure that out some reports yesterday about people catching their limits oh there's a fish people catching fish down in Roark Creek so there was about six different groups of people or six different boats and that all the boats were pulling in fish so it sounds like the creeks are warming up enough to hold some hold some of those fish that are wanting some warmer water. I think I got a brown trout here. Yeah. Looky there. Caught a nice little 14er. If 
15 inch brown swimming there underneath that dock. Beautiful fish. Go, buddy. That is another note. Uh, if you're out here fishing and you know wanting a chance at a brown, I know I bet the homie tried to block the mic there. I know that was windy sounding. Um, fishing in between docks. I've noticed that brown trout like to stack up, you know, in the dead space between two docks. And you can throw, you know, if you're dragging a scud or something, you can throw it up in between the two docks and drag it under the next one. Or your jig or your jerk bait or whatever you're using. Uh, that's one way to potentially target a brown trout. I think we'll fish this flat here and call it a day. There's another one. So this flat is a nice little eddy that goes for a few hundred feet, maybe a hundred yards, maybe a little more. It's, uh, you know, about the same depth all the way through, and uh, it's a great spot to throw just about anything. That's another one of those shallower spots where on a windy day you can still get your jig to the bottom or at least close enough to the bottom oh I felt that hit are some dangerous right now the water is just high enough to go over the top of these root wads but I just heard the water riffling next to the boat because of it something you got to pay attention to it's so easy to be drifting along and not looking and that motor will get hung up on that root wad and all of a sudden whoever's standing on the back of the boat isn't there anymore happened to my buddy Ryan a week or two ago wind's blowing enough to stop my boat so this is one of those moments where I'm gonna <coughs> cast upstream of me in order to be able to work my jig near the bottom longer I'm actually gonna try to jerk bait it a little bit keeps my line nice and close to the water And I found another log. I don't think I got that one back either. And the only other two rods I have with me are white jigs. I like to use this white color a little more whenever it's cloudy. For some reason I feel like it works a little bit better, but it's the only two I have left, so. We'll try it with the sun beaming down and see if it works.
couple more casts and then we are at the end of this flat. Oh, I think that might have just been the bottom. All right, last cast. We're going to put it right here between this stump and this dock. Something else that I've mentioned before, but whenever I'm working a jig, I like to leave a little slack in the line. Oh no. Whew, that was close. I almost got caught on the corner of that dock. All right, I lied. One more cast. Um, sun went away for a second. It might work. I leave a little bit of slack in my line when I'm working a jig. Uh, just a little bow. Not too much. But it allows a little bit of extra line for that jig to sink down freely without being pulled against your rod or the current. I always leave it there for for each uh, next jerk. There's a fish. Lots of lots of little stalkers. starting to see some more boats on the water though so you know people will be out here taking some of them out now and I can't end I can't end on catching a fish so I think that's part of the last cast rules I don't remember so I better cast one more time the wind is actually changing directions on me as we speak it was blowing completely against the boat and it is now blowing me downstream with the current pretty crazy how it can change just around one bend on the lake I was going to stop, but this is one of my favorite spots. <laughs> right before that dock by the little gravel boat ramp above Short Creek, and then right after it in the flat. Um, just a go-to spot for me. I promise this is the last cast this time.
Okay, and there it is. Got to stop myself. I'll keep saying last cast for the next two hours. All right, guys. We thank you for watching. Like and share us on Facebook. And if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, press the subscribe button and hit the little bell. It'll let you know whenever we post the video first. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.